like to cover in this documentary is how the Violence Against Women Act changed the dynamics of domestic violence in America. It is a federal uh, act and before the act the dynamics looked very different and so this documentary want to explore how did that change people's everyday life when it comes to violence and their remedies for violence or how law enforcement reacts to violence. Tell me more about what is the Violence Against Women Act? Well, the Violence Against Women Act was enacted by Bill Clinton in 1994, um, basically in recognition of the severe crimes like sexual assault, uh, domestic violence, and stalking. And so what is your connection to this topic? My connection, um, I've been an advocate for over 20 years and now I'm a writer. My grandparents uh, had a violent relationship, a violent marriage, and I feel like domestic violence kind of uh, goes through generations of a family. So like, maybe it's not you today, but your grandparents, because of maybe their divorce or their violence, could affect your relationships today or things that happen to you and your family dynamics. And so for me, um, I feel it has made me really aware of uh, the violence against women. The Senate Judiciary Committee held a hearing earlier today on reauthorizing the Violence Against Women Act, which is set to expire in September. Activists, Justice Department officials, and a San Diego prosecutor all testified about the law, which was first enacted in 1994 and aims to help survivors of domestic violence. This is there is something we can do to address these sort of incidents, and particularly it seems appropriate today to talk about the fact that if you've got a domestic violence conviction or the subject of a protective order, you can't legally buy a gun. But if our broken background check system doesn't reveal that fact at the point of purchase, then people are going to be able to lie, get access to guns, and kill their domestic partner. In my time as a judge and as a prosecutor and in private practice, before that, I have been able to see firsthand the work of victim service providers, advocates, prosecutors, the efficacy of specialized dockets, the way VAWA has influenced public thought about domestic violence, stalking, sexual assault, and dating violence. I am very excited to bring this real world experience to the office. OVW's mission is to provide federal leadership in developing the nation's capacity to reduce violence against women and administer justice for and strengthen services to victims of sexual assault, dating violence, domestic violence, and stalking, uh, also referred to as the four VAWA crimes. Since 1995, OVW has awarded over $7.6 billion in grants and per cooperative agreements. VAWA 2013 increased focus of OVW and grantees on sexual assault. 
As a result, more sexual assault victims are being served, more medical forensic exams are being performed, more sexual assault cases are being accepted and prosecuted. OVW provides over 2 million housing and shelter bed nights to victims and children each year. Every six months, OVW grants provide legal assistance to 28,000 victims. OVW grantees trained almost 12,000 nurses who provide medical forensic care. Every year, uh, VAWA-funded professionals assist victims in securing more than 200,000 protection orders and OVW funds nearly 300 prosecutors' salaries and nearly 300 law enforcement salaries. How prevalent of a situation is domestic violence in this country? I, I can tell you that it is very pre prevalent, but it has decreased uh, substantially by two-thirds uh, since we passed the Violence Against Women Act. Uh, the Violence Against Women Act um, uh, has provided resources to advocates, uh, shelter uh, for women escaping from abusers. Um, it has brought together the best practices of law enforcement, uh, the di uh, district attorneys, the court system, uh, even the medical profession. Um, uh, when, when women show up at, at a hospital now, um, they are routinely asked if, if, whether or not they're safe in their home. Uh, if there are suspicious injuries, um, there is an assessment right there in the emergency room as to whether or not uh, they are facing domestic violence. Three women a day die at the hands of an abuser. Yeah, we, we read earlier the papers cited a 64 percent reduction in domestic violence since the Violence Against Women Act was passed in 1994. Today marks the 20th anniversary. You were the lead sponsor of the reauthorization of that act. What would what did that law what was added to the law under the reauthorization? It was very difficult to get it over the finish line, but we added protections in uh, for Native American women uh, and for LGBTQ women. Uh, prior to uh, to this reauthorization, uh, a, a Native American woman did not have the protection on tribal lands uh, against a non-tribal member. Um, literally, we've heard reports and stories of how men would drag Native women back onto tribal lands to beat them, rape them, knowing that they could do it with no consequences. Uh, and of course, um, uh, we remedy that um, with this reauthorization. It was winter of 1988, the first time I ran away. It was after my father said he was going to kill me. I had talked with my stepmom, who had told me that was the very reason she left him also. And in my heart, I took it seriously. And so one blizzardy night, I jumped on my bike with a backpack and I headed to the next city, which was a four and a half mile ride. And that led me into a journey through the system that marked the rest of my life. I never thought that the system would blame me. I actually got a ticket for being incorrigible and habitual misbehavior. And in my case, it wasn't until uh, the recommendation to have hip surgery um, did the system finally take me serious. But even then, I had to get a legal aid attorney to get me placed in foster care to be able to have a safe place to have surgery. No doubt domestic violence and child abuse is hard to talk about. You most likely really love the person who abused you, but if you bear the scars, you have the right to your testimony of survival. For me personally, this has been my life work, um, and it'll always probably be my journey, and I hope that women 
who do have violent relationships find some escape and some way to get help so they're free, can live free, and no one should have to live in fear.